Uh, remember we've been talking about the main square, the place where we have our local activities, so behind you, there, is the place where we have all kind of activities, especially in Christmas time. In the 24th of December, we have a Christmas fest that takes place in the city of Bethlehem. Thousands of people here, 28 group, local group, or uh, Scouts group that play music, welcoming the Patriarch. And then we get inside the Church of Nativity. And also during the first week of December, we have a Christmas market. And it's happened in the city of Bethlehem each and every year. But it's not as local market, this time for foreigners when they come into the city of Bethlehem to sell their tradition things that they use in Christmas. Like from Hungary, France, Italy, uh, Norway, Sweden, all. They have like small costs there and they sell things for locals for one week. So which is uh, very fun that we have it including a big Christmas tree and nativity scene. Then they get inside with the Patriarch, to the Church of Nativity. This is the oldest church in the Holy Land that you're going to explain the whole history of this. So now we're getting to see the, uh, the door of humility in our respect. So please guys follow me. And please cover yourself, the one who knows that needs to be covered. We are together uh, with Benar Rim Tours. But our tour guide is the, one of the best Palestinian tour guides. His name is Martin. Say hi, Martin. And I will, uh, I will add that the description is telephone number or um, email or something like that, and you will, have, you will be able to contact him directly. Okay, so friends, we just wait a second here. Yeah. Let us say hello to Isa. Say hi, Isa. <laughs> but yes, well, we're about to get inside the Church of Nativity through the main entrance, which is this little humble door. This is the door of humility and respect that makes everybody spending respecting the birthplace of Jesus. Why? In the very beginning, five point when they built up this church, it used to be that main entrance that you can see it in the top that's marked as a huge gate. But it wasn't enough to protect the church from any attacks or even so they make that little arch in the 12th century almost to make it as a fortress and then they notice that it always should be like something to respect the birthplace and to protect it from any attack especially for animals they can get in here for that reason they make the humble door so we're bending down respecting the birth of jesus okay so please watch your head as we're getting in here gentlemen hats off only yes, gentlemen. and women, don't forget to cover yourself. Let me be the first one, Martin. Let me enter straight into the church. And this is the Nortex, the entrance to the church. You can see a beautiful Armenian door. Look how beautiful it is. And that's the entrance to the church. The church belongs to the Catholic Greek Orthodox and Armenians, but this is the Greek Orthodox part. They just renovated the church, then, uh, and that's by the order of UNESCO. Uh, they declare lately the church as a World Heritage Site. Look at the beautiful Crusader mosaic. Look at the beautiful frescoes on the Crusader frescoes. And um, on the columns and beneath the beautiful uh, wooden floor, there are, uh, you can actually see an amazing mosaics from the 4th century. This is the oldest functioning church. Look at the part of the mosaic that they open for us. Spend more time in the cave of birth. Which is very important for me mm -hmm. and I think for you too. All right, you can talk. Yeah, we good. I'm just waiting a few more. I cannot wait. The video's on. Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right. We are now in the oldest church in the Holy Land. This is the Church of Nativity. This is the birthplace of Jesus. If you remember, we've been talking about the birth of Jesus while coming here on the bus. We're talking about that little stable. So maybe in your imagination goes for a wooden stable, but in fact it's a cave that used to be as a stable that you're gonna see in a minute. So this church was built over the cave of birth. 
in 325 for the first time by the time of Queen Helena. Mother so, so Empress so. Constantine, then she built up the first feminine church that was surrounded that hill. That church was destroyed by Samaritans in 529, according to that revolt that it happened, so it was destroyed somehow and rebuilt in this way in 540 by Justinian or Justinianus, as it's known with this form as it is. So many things used to be remodeled by time for sure, but basically the structure of this church is from 540 that the pillar that you can see over here and the layout of this church which is look like a big cross that you can see it all the way down here. So that's basically from 540. From? 512, 540 AD. So 612 Persians attack it. They want to destroy it, something stop them. Why do you think Persians, they did not destroy this church for a small reason? Any idea? Because of the three wise men. One of the three wise men is a Persian. They came here, they recognized God, respected their king, they left it as it is, so that's according to They the destroy every church in the Holy Land except of that one. Yeah. That's why it's the Even most... Even the Holy Sepulchre yeah. was destroyed. Every church reason. except every of that. Church. So we're lucky to have this. As you can see, we have 44 Corinthian pillars, 20 of these pillars got iconic paints. Returning back to the time of the Crusaders, they just recovered these. If you return back to some old photos, you'll notice that it's getting more smoke and you couldn't recognize this until the Italians, they came here in a huge project around 2013, starting fixing the roof, which is a donation from King Edward IV down to the mosaics. And then to the pillars, they recovered that and finally they reached the floor. So all the wooden panel is excavated. Excavated? There is, yes, there is mosaics that you're gonna see part of. It. Sorry, not all of it is open. Sometimes they open. Sadly, I don't know why not. There's not a lot yeah, of the tourists. The most important now. one is here, but it's. Good. I know. That's mean. You have to come and visit us one more time. Or <laughs> to watch my videos. <laughs> Remember, we already saw it, but let's mosaics see it again. Before we get into this. So, friends. We're talking about the oldest mosaics somehow in the Holy Land that returned back to 325. That church was destroyed, protected by dust somehow, and by chance we discovered this one small earthquake at the city of Bethlehem. Some cracks. Who, who founded the uh, six people that will be happy to hear it? About who actually found the mosaic? That's the Bri British. The British. The British. <laughs> Some six people are here now, you know exactly. 1934, around that small earthquake at the city of Holy Science into the floor. So before this, there is Holy Science into the floor. After that, no. So that's how we get to know that it's one of the oldest. Why do you see crosses here? Mm -hmm. There's one here. Oh, and okay. there is the one. Yeah, there are no. Yeah, but now I can see it here sorry, as well. Sorry, how old? How old? How old? 1700 here. For, yeah, yes. for, for, for fourth century, mm -hmm. the beginning of Christianity. That's it. Sorry. Remember, we couldn't build churches That's before the fourth the century. One. Yeah. That's for the first one. Now, let's go. Let's get before the other tours getting into the cave. Let, let's go to the grotto immediately. I can okay, see a group that are now entering. <clears throat> then we are continue with the Greek Orthodox path. Where is my dear lady with the green Greek Orthodox area? No, I know, but. I'm sorry. Martin, I was talking about Smiling Mary. Can you just mention it, please? As they're coming soon here. Yeah. Sorry. Friends, let me have your attention. Before we get down to the cave of birth, uh, here we can see this famous icon, Smiling Mary, Mary, the Lady of Bethlehem. She's smiling. This and is the Smiling the Mary. That's the difference between two main basic icons in here. Down here is the cave of birth. We're getting 14 steps around to get down into our right side. You're going to see the star of that lamp. Silver star laid down. You can kneel down, touch it for a blessing, you can take a photo. As you can see, it's lucky that we don't have that much of tourists. Lucky so for them. Take a photo fast. And then into the left, 
there is the place of the holy manger where Jesus lay down after his birth. So that's the second thing that you're going to see inside. It. Part of the midnight mass as a procession to get down to the cave of prayer and bring baby Jesus with. So we're getting down. Please watch your step. There is part of us are slipping. We enter into the grotto of the nativity. That's where Jesus was born. And my friends, go and touch it. Friends, you can even touch, touch the star of that thing. Thank you. I don't know what I did, but thank you. Awesome. Okay. okay. Then. Guys, this is where Jesus was born. You, you know me. Touching holy site, it's important. Then please touch it. Feel the energy. And then go to see the manger, which is there. And this is. Do you want to explain again? Or? Yeah, I'll repeat it just a minute. All right. of Jesus by land. So this is the 14 point spot. And then we move down here to the place of the holy manger where you can see the five candles. So first here you can kneel down touch it for a blessing if you'd like to and then you can move down to see that part. Now Martin said if you like to. I'm saying how many times you're gonna be here? Of course you want to touch it. Bless yourself by doing it. For Martin's everyday thing. That's the manager. That's where Mary fed the child, uh, changed his diaper in a way, uh, fed him. This is the manger. And that's the three kings. Yeah. That's where they came. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. The manger is here, and the three kings chapel is here. It's like a 3D Bible tour. You know it by heart, but now you see it. It's different. You touch it different. Energy is so strong here. That is the cave of the grotto. If you will enter through that door, you will reach the second part of the grotto, which is the Catholic part. Sadly, most of the time, the door is closed. Um, where's Martin? Uh, Went we up? Go. Okay, then I will be with the rest. Yeah. We are going out of the grotto, straight to the Armenian chapel, which is now in front of you, and always, uh, when always visiting the Armenian chapel, I'm thinking about you, Robbie, Rubina. But I'm thinking about my uh, family member, EJ Ian. Bethy as well. So 
So you can see the Armenian altar, the tradition cross of Armenians. This morning they used to have a procession. After that, after they finished the opening, so it's basically divided in between the three. And according to the three, there's something called a statistical and agreement. Like each and every one got their time, they to pray inside the cave of birth. So um, after like 20 minutes, there was one more Armenian procession. Then the book used to be the Catholics, and after that, going to be the Greek Orthodox one. So the church is divided somehow according to, the, to this order and according to that they having these processions and even care about this kind of church. The church next door that it, they just opened it, which is the Catholic church that we're going to visit. And this church where we make our midnight mass in Christmas, on the 24th, the, the Christmas mass. The most here. important Christmas mass in the world yeah, from is, that is from there. So we're going to see that church. So and there. did you talk about the amazing mosaics? Yeah, the amazing mosaics. So we've been talking about the other side. Oh, yes. Basically, it's the same age and same time. That's by the time the Crusaders. Crusaders. And these are gold plated. We recognize this when the Italians, they clean it up because before that it used to be brown, black, and green. The church were using oil lamps for that long. So and that's a yeah. layer of smoke. It's make it into black, almost dark. So you can see how nice it is. Clean it up, shiny again, so clear. So now it's getting back as it is. The white part is the missing part that we don't have it anymore. So even in the other part, you know, this wasn't like incomplete. That's because it's fall down. Some of the tourists back then or pilgrims, they used to collect it. Some have been cleaned. So there's but, but yeah, but you can see beautifully doubting Thomas. There. That's one of, one of the most complete. Yes. That's one of the most... And I think they believe that this is the ascension. Yeah. Maybe? Right. Yep. And they believe that that's St. Thomas, you want to check that that's Jesus. He's the one that was crucified. He's the one who that much of them do. Take so. So let's move down to the Catholic Church. Now we saw the Greek Orthodox. We are at the Armenian part. And now we are entering to the... Catholic part, which Martin said that it's open now, but not from here. Now we will go through the main entrance. We enter now to the Catholic part, the Santa Catarina Church. <clears throat> So beautiful that I do have a Palestinian tour guide. I'm an Israeli tour guide, and guess what? It goes together. Family, I'm here. We are here. Let's enter Santa Catarina, the Catholic Church. Put my stomach in. No, you don't. It's always it makes pity people slimy. Oh, <laughs> How uh, are you? You know, Israeli tour guide. Yeah. Oh, a horrible <laughs> tour guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Israeli one. <laughs> <laughs> Israeli <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go into the Catholic. Uh, he's already there. <clears throat> Guys, to the Catholic. He's waiting for you. Go to the Catholic before they will close it. Oh, it's okay. more important here. We're going to visit later on. Don't be afraid. i tracking you and I know not to take a video of you. Thank you. All right. Then uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if you are. But you don't need to be the last one. That's what I'm telling you. Although uh, it looks like you prefer to be the last one. <laughs> You're welcome. We just entered to the... Um, Catholic Church, Santa Catarina Church, uh, it's such a beautiful place. Uh, that's where they held uh, Christmas Mass. Yeah, the one that you know. Uh, if you remember the, entrance, the door at the grotto, the grotto led to that grotto of the Catholic area. Sadly, it's closed. Then we cannot actually visit it. But what you can see here is a very small piece from the original a uh, manger that we got lately from uh, the Rome, uh, from Rome, Santa Maria Maggiore from the Vatican. I can see Jesus' baby here and a small piece 
of the um, manager from the original one. It's so sad to see that church so empty. Look at the organ. And um, the one who translate um, the, the, the Bible to Latin, Vulgata, is actually here. I mean, here, he did it here, St. Jerome. And um, the yard outside is named by his name. Then let's go outside. The family is already there. And you can see St. Jerome. Like Sunday, as I told you, we got our mass. It's full of people getting in here. This is the main entrance to get inside the church, and that's why it's called the courtyard of Saint Jerome, according to the statue of Saint Jerome that we've been talking about his translations here in the city of Bethlehem. Questions for now before continuing. It's in the past. At the end of the tour, we got quiz. <laughs> <laughs> By him, not by me. I promise that at the end of the tour, I won't talk. St. George, I think we already know him. Now you will see a beautiful chapel of his. St. George. Wait, wait, city of the name Lord. Do we know that city? Yes, we saw it early morning. Sure. On the way to Jerusalem. On the way to Jerusalem. So basically, in the 23rd of May, we have the day of St. George. So people from all over the Holy Land, we've been there celebrating that day, which is a real holiday here and it's very famous. And George name is a very common name in the city of Bethlehem. Uh, that's why, because a lot of people, they believe in St. George. Even the statue of St. George, they used to put it in the top of houses as kind of a blessing and protecting. So that's the story behind that, and that's how people are uh, believing in St. George. They statue here since 1926. It's a donation from local Christian families. They put it here, and since that time, it's in here. So, it's almost 100 year old statue, still existing. Dan, family, can we continue? Back to the sun. Yeah, then we are going out from the Catholic area. Um, let me show you the entrance from the outside because you saw the Greek Orthodox entrance. Then this is the. Uh, you can see the the skyscrapers of Jerusalem. Remember, we saw it right there, the green area as well. Yeah. What did you say, sorry? The, the, uh, Jerusalem, the two striker rapers that we saw. Then, you can see here, the Catholic, we enter through the Greek Orthodox, and the Armenian chapel. The entrance is from there. Then that was the, a nice, um, a video for the group of Benarim and Martin and uh, thank you very much for being with me, with me don't forget to subscribe my channel and to send it to all of your friends bye bye